This is a brief tour of the Allen Bradley Micrologics 1100 PLC used as a loop controller to do PID control for general control of processes such as flow control, level control, temperature control, pressure control. We use the 1100 PLC as the CPU, the processor, and then we add the expansion card onto it. The model 1762 IF2-OF2 card has a pair of analog input channels and a pair of analog output channels, allowing us to do two PID control loops with one PLC. In fact, we can even do more than that if we stack on additional expansion cards. But for right now, two loops and one PLC is a pretty good amount. So we're going to explore how this is set up. Every one of these PLCs is set up on an Ethernet network, which allows them to be tied together through a hub to common uh, HMI operator panels and also to each other if we want to exchange information from one PLC to the other. If we go into the advanced settings here and look at the Ethernet configuration, we can see the IP address. This one is 169.254.7.8. And we have labeled or numbered the IP addresses in such a way that the last digit refers to the junction box the PLC is found in. So dot eight refers to junction box JB8. Coming over here, junction box JB9, we look at here and this PLC has an address 169.254.7.9. So that's the labeling convention to try to make it really easy to identify which PLC is where. So coming over to our computer cluster, we can see here that our communications is set up to talk to these PLCs on the common network. If we go to RS Links and take a look at the communications, right here we go to RS Who. That tells us the drivers we have active and the PLCs under the driver. So here we have two PLCs, 169.254.7.8 and .7.9, the two PLCs we just looked at with those respective addresses, and they're online and working. That tells us we can start up the RS Logix Micro English program and talk to either one of those. So, Rockwell Software, Micro English, right there. We open up that program, and we can explore a bit of what's inside these PLC programs. So I'll choose one of those two PLCs arbitrarily. I'll go up here to comms, say who active go online, I'll choose one of those, either .8 or .9, doesn't really matter for the sake of this uh, activity. I'm going to open that up, and it's asking what file do we want to use. Now I just want to see what's online with this PLC. I don't want to save it to a file on the hard drive of this personal computer. I don't want to archive it. I don't want to alter the program and change it. I just want to monitor what's online. So I'll say create a new file. And it will create a temporary file here of whatever it sees happening in that PLC. So, notice I have in program files over here, I have uh, a few ladder diagram pages. The first one, called main program, is the one that always pops up under a default uh, structure here with Alan Bradley. And on this main page, we don't really have that many instructions. We've got a jump to subroutine, scale of parameters, a PID instruction, and then a repeat of the same down here. Another jump to subroutine, another scale parameters instruction, and another PID instruction. It turns out that this is just the bare minimum to do PID control, having scaling and PID in the program. Really, most of the meat of this program is hidden in the subroutines. So if we go to one of these subroutines over here, ladder number three, for example, in ladder number three, this is the subroutine that gets called by that first box. And inside this subroutine, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. We've got some first pass contacts that initialize certain important bits and parameters in the PID instruction to make sure they're always set the way we want them to be. We have a couple more scaling instructions for uh, input and output to make sure it's scaled properly for the ADD converters and DDA converters. We have some move instructions here, moving data around back and forth between some of the PID blocks registers and some N7 registers, so that's where our, our HMI panel can read them. We've got some stuff going on here with auto manual uh, that are used for set point tracking and output tracking. We've got some greater than, less than comparison instructions for our alarm bit. And then here, we've got some instructions telling us to move P, I, and D tuning values from the HMI touchscreen into the PLC program. This is all really practical stuff to make the software work smoothly as a loop controller. We want to set these PLCs up so they'd be basically trouble-free. Just plug the program in, start it up, and it is ready to act as a loop controller. 
Now, in the PLC programming course, we'll actually have students go through and develop their own programs from scratch to do various tasks. But here we're using the PLC strictly as a loop controller, a fast track way to get a pressure, level, flow, or temperature control loop up and running. So the main program page is really all the important stuff you're going to need to set for that. And there's a separate video we talked about setting up the scaling parameters for the uh, engineering unit and process variable, and also setting up some of the PID tuning parameters. But I just want to give you a brief tour of uh, the program, what it looked like here. Now, I mentioned the HMI panel, and we do have an HMI panel here as well. This has been programmed to show the layout of the entire lab room. And so far, we only have two PLCs connected to the network. Eventually, these will all be networked. We have JB8 and JB9. If I go to JB8 right there, it brings me to a graph, a trend graph, showing me process variable, set point, and output, and also if I have alarm, and also if I uh, want to show the process variable in engineering units. If I want to look at, look at a detailed display of this controller, I can hit JB8 faceplate. And that brings up the faceplate control where I have a set point slider, I have an output slider I can move up and down, I can go between automatic and manual modes there, I can choose to track my set point or not track my set point in manual mode. I also have the same display, the process variable and engineering units. I've got a high alarm, a low alarm, and then I've got my gain, reset, and rate. That'd be my P, I, and D tuning parameters. So this is kind of the technician's view of this loop controller and what it's doing. The trend graph, of course, is used for tuning and for monitoring the performance of the loop. Now, this one HMI, again, can talk to multiple PLCs. So I can go to the junction box 9 right here and take a look at its PLC and look at its tuning values and its high and low alarm points and all that. And eventually, these will be set up as well with their own uh, PLCs networked to the entire system. So kind of the operator display and the technician tuning display is here. The technician, of course, the student, that is, will have to go over to the personal computer and configure some of the parameters in the PLC program to get the scaling right and to get the control action right and things like that. But once that's all set up, we basically just uh, you know, change the parameters we want here, uh, hit the enter key to store them, and then like I said, we don't have to save or download the program to the PLC. We're just changing online parameters. So when we're done with our work here, we close it out, hit the X button, say we know we do not want to save changes, and there we go. And we're done with that part of the PLC program configuration. So again, we're trying to make it really easy and convenient for students who want to use one of these MicroLogix controllers as a PID controller uh, and not worry about the details of ladder logic pro programming, but just use it as a loop controller and drive on from there.